Lauren Rosen. Hey, Matisse, your reputation is one such that we kind of knew what you were going to be bringing into this series defensively, but you also really held your own on the offensive end in game one. How can a performance like that for you personally inform your mindset as the series continues? Um, I mean, really, it was, I think that's something that like Doc and like my role has needed for like majority of the season. And I think the playoffs just heighten everything, magnifies things. So like we're, Teams are going to, like, give up a little bit, and they're going to give up a little bit more and so they can focus on other things. So with me, it's, like, leaving me on the three-point line. And, like, whether it's been conversations with, like, friends, mentors, or coaches just trying to help me with my confidence, I think it's done a lot in terms of allowing me to uh, succeed in those situations. And then that just helps carry over into what I already know I can do defensively. Doc said after game one that of any sixer, you've probably put up the most shots in the last five days. And while I know it's not a competition, can you tell us a little bit more about that extra work you're putting in and why it's important for you to be doing it right now? I mean, it just goes back to the confidence thing. Like when you when you know you put in the work, when you've done the reps, like you you have something that you can fall back on. And for me, it was just like get up as many shots as possible without trying to take away from just without fatiguing myself too much so I can show up and still perform. And yeah, I think it helps a little bit, but I mean, that's one game and we're down one game. So it's going to be a lot more. It's going to take a lot more than just, just that. Thanks, Matisse. Mm -hmm. Mark Narducci. Matisse, could you just talk about what is the toughest thing about having to deal with Trey Young? Uh, he's, he's really versatile. He's like, he, he's so quick. And his, his ability to just navigate in the paint and make plays for himself and uh, his teammates, it just makes it, you, it, it feels like at times you, you can cut off one thing and then he just finds another thing. And ultimately it's just being able to get, uh, get guys on him to slow him down, bump him off, off his path, and then as a team, just finishing the plays with uh, rotations and rebounds. Okay, thanks. Dave McMenamin. Hey, Matisse, it's uh, Iverson's birthday today, and this season is the 20th, 20-year uh, 20 anniversary of that finals run the Sixers had. I guess in your experience playing uh, for Philadelphia, what uh, has uh, Iverson's presence been like, whether seeing him on social media, seeing him at games, um, uh, how much uh, of a stamp has he put on the organization? I mean, just the, the legend of Allen Iverson is just so huge. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I'm going to go on a little tangent here, but like, one of the knocks that people make on Philly is like, oh, the, the most famous athlete from Philly isn't even real. And they're all referring to Rocky. But like, you, being a sixer, you realize like how big of an impact Iverson's had on this city and this team and, and the legacy of this team and what, what it means to be a sixer today. Um, we have a lot to thank him for that. And yes, yeah, so, I mean, happy birthday, AI. Next, we'll go to Crystal Soltas. Hey, Matisse, hope you're doing well. What was the main, the main difference on your game defensive-wise in fourth quarter last night and what do you need to maintain or what do you need to improve on game two? Um, just intensity, just trying to up the physicality a little bit, create more pressure, put more pressure on the ball. Um, and I think that just that, that needs to be the more of the standard for the next, next games, next game specifically. Um, just not letting it, them get into anything easily and asserting ourselves physically on the defensive end, really. Let's head back over to Lauren Rosen. I was not expecting to be able to double up like this in the playoffs, but here we are. Um, Matisse, when you think about the second half of game one, what can you guys do as a group to sort of transfer that second half that was really strong on both ends into game two and have that sort of be what informs your next performance as opposed to what went on in the first half? Um. I mean, it's not, it's not that complicated. Like, we, we proved that we know what to do and we know how to do it. And it's just showing up and doing it from the jump. Like, it's, it's, it's really easy to, to take a breath after you win a series. But it's, in, in all reality, is that's the time to really, like, hunker down and, like, dig in even deeper. And I think the first half just showed a little bit of that. And the second half is just showing what, what we're really here to do, what we're really about. Any final questions for Matisse? All right, Matisse, thank you. See you, people.